Welcome back to the shop, my friends. So one of the comments on my last video of trying to figure out where we was going with this, somebody asked, can we see how that you set up this machine as far as maybe go through some of your dial calipers, how you use them, um, as far as how I got this machine level, things like that. Now the beauty about this machine, just to get it out there right out the gate, is this is considered a tabletop lathe. Be a big table, but I did build a steel table for this thing with adjustable feet. I put the uh, same thing I did for the benches if y'all watch that video but with this one it's welded on nuts on the bottom of it with a bolt sticking out of the bottom so that I can adjust all four corners. But these are very, being it's such a short package it's not that hard to get it level as it would be for a long bed lathe. Long bed lathe you would need actual machining squares and machining levels and things like that. But the basic way that I do it, and I got it level, is I start by getting a rough level. Rough level is using something like this. This is a 360 degree bubble level. So it, will, it shows you all corners. And you just take, and I just set it on the bed of the lathe, on the actual rails. Let me, let me turn y'all down. So I just set it on the actual rails and get it within the bubble. That's a start. Okay, then I check with another level. I may have two levels set on here and I'll run them both ways. Then after I have that done, I run this out to the furthest mo most point that I can run it, okay? I know that this is level by pulling it all the way forward. I put a center in the, in the headstock I put a uh, center in the tailstock, run the tailstock all the way out to get the most stretch I can get out of it, run them together, and then take this and make it level, perfectly level to where the points are touching you, with getting this aligned with the tailstock. Once I have that done, I then take and put a live center in the back a long piece of metal in the front chuck, run it between centers, and take a cut. Take a full cut all the way down at say five thousandths, ten thousandths, whatever you want to take on that first cut, and then you measure it. You take calipers, you measure from the end all the way back to the stock. That's going to tell you if this end needs to be picked up a little bit, this end needs to be picked up a little bit, let down a little bit. That's, gonna, that's how you level a machine is you try to make a full cut and you want it to be the same on one end as it is the other. And I've got mine within a couple of thousands. I think like I think I was at a thousand and a half. It was just it was really tight. For a tabletop machine, it might have been two thousands total. Yeah, I think it was two thousands total. For a tabletop machine for what this is, that is tremendously good, especially being inside of a shipping container, because that may be more accurate than the actual Gibbs are in this uh, crossfeed. So I'm very happy with that. That's how I go about getting it level. Now, as far as my tools that I use, the dial indicators, things like that. So this is your standard dial indicator right here. It has a total of 10 revolutions. So it has an inch worth of movement, okay? So you have uh, basically a hundred thousandths worth of movement across the board, right? And I've got it on a mighty mount aluminum, or a mighty mount magnetic base. And what this allows you to do is you can take and stick this on the bed of the lathe, like so, or on the cross feed and then you can come in exactly the amount you need to come in. If you need to come in 10 thousandths, you move this 10 thousandths, you're there. You come off 10 thousandths, you 10 thousandths and you're there. Or you can come in 100 thousandths, whatever you need. That's where this comes in. It doesn't move, it's locked into place with the magnet and you can use it vice versa. It also works for your cross feed. You can do the same thing on cross feed and you can do it on depth. You can stick it up here on top of your mill head and come down as much as you want. Okay, not on the not on the actual spindle, but on the mill head if you're trying to move the mill head down. 
like for instance on the little mini mill, mini mill over there I'll use this a lot because these it has interchangeable tips so you can actually shrink it down to make it smaller I'll stick this on the head on the actual back of let me turn you that way I'll stick it on right here and use it to come down so you're not just so you're not just relying on even though they're 90 percent of the time they're right the numbers that are on your handles okay that they have they are marked out in thousands as well and they are pretty close but having a having a secondary check is always good especially if you're trying to get something that's plus or minus a thousandth or something like that or plus or minus two or three thousandths now going on to your next indicator is an inside hole indicator and this thing only goes twenty thousandths okay and it just has it's, it's it very little very little movement to make that thing jump okay this is made it's on this mount here and what that's for is you actually screw it onto your chuck itself now you're not going to have the machine on at this point you want it in free spin mode but you don't want it on <laughs> you don't want the actual power button on you want this thing to be dead whenever you do this because you don't want this thing to go spinning around and mess up your indicator so whenever you don't have this on here if you was trying to find the inside diameter of a hole you would take and you would turn this around the inside diameter of the hole so you'd get it to where it was touching on one side and you just go around the inside of the hole until you got it square and that would be the inside diameter of the hole that's what it's for okay you also have things for finding the edge I'll, I'll grab one okay this is an edge finder right here you chuck this up in the lathe and then you spin it and whenever it starts spinning this thing kicks out off to the side like that and you'll see it wobbling when you come up to the edge of something it'll start getting closer closer and then it'll run dead still when it runs dead still you go just a little bit more after it's running dead still and it'll kick off to the side and stop hitting your part that is the edge and then you can get really fine with the other side of this which does the exact same thing you have this and you can do that in holes as well use that to find your dead center of your hole and that brings us to the next indicator I use I only have a few indicators but I have as many as I need I may need a couple of more of these exact same ones but as far as variety I have them all so this indicator is a magnetic base with an on and off switch and this is used for as well as you can use it on a mill you could turn it however you needed to on a mill but what it's really used for if, is you take and mount this thing to your work your uh, cross feed and you bring it down to your part if you have a four jaw chuck which I'm still waiting on my four jaw chuck I ordered it I hadn't come in yet all right so your four jaw chuck you're gonna tighten the highs and loosen the lows that's how you center something on a lathe anything that's high you're gonna tighten anything that's low you're gonna loosen so what you're trying to do is on a four jaw, six jaw, eight jaw chuck, whatever, your part's in the middle, all right? And it's gonna be, it's probably not gonna be dead center when you tighten it up because each one of them have their own chuck instead of like a three jaw has one on each side that moves all three jaws at the same time and locks in. Now you're not gonna be on a three jaw, it's never gonna be as close as you can get with a four jaw. It's just, or a six jaw. Six jaw is even better but it's close enough to do minor work now you wouldn't want to do precision precision work with a three jaw I mean you could you could do rough precision I, I guess I, I use that term likely precision on three jaw four jaw is where it's at alright so you basically take this thing and what I mean by highs and lows so if you're spinning your part right here and this pushes in that's a high when it goes all the way down that's a low 
highs, lows, highs, lows. And whenever you pull it around, you're doing this by hand. You're just taking it, you're spinning it around. And as you spin it around, this thing's going to be doing this. It's going to go up and then back down, up and then back down, up and back down. Okay, as you're spinning this around, you're going to do it slowly. You're going to bring it around until you have a jaw directly in front of this indicator. And let's say you're right here. Let me get my, my bearings here of where zero is. All right, so there's zero right here. All right, so let's say there you're right here. So that's a high. So you're going to want to tighten that. If you can't tighten it, you need to go around to the exact 180 degrees from that four jaw and loosen it, then come back to the other one and tighten it, and it'll come back to like here. But that's as tight as you can get it. So then you got to go back to the 180 degrees out, loosen it a little bit, and tighten this one and get it closer. What your ideal ideal point here is going through all four or all six of those jaws is you want that thing to spin and have about no movement or just like the surface texture movement which will almost be like a vibration in the needle be as close as you want as close as you can get it to zero that's always going to be the best as close as you can get it to zero the better some pieces like let's say this piece of aluminum right here this outer outer ring on this this surface finish may have a scratch in it may have some kind of finish on it that makes that needle vibrate and you won't be able to see exact exact zero like you would want which that's what i want is exact zero if i can get it if i can't get it then i get as close as i can all right so that's your indicators that's going through how the indicators work and maybe that's what you was asking me to go through. If not, leave a comment if I, if I missed something. Um, that's, pretty much, that's pretty much indicators in a nutshell. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.